The lymphatic drainage of the lower limb. The lymphatic drainage of the lower limb occurs by lymph nodes and the lymphatics. This lymph drainage of the lower limb is very important according to the clinical point of view because of the inflammatory lesions of the limb cause painful enlargement of the lymph nodes whereas the blockage of the lymphatics by the microfilarial parasites leads to the massive edema of the lower limb. Remember, most of the lymphatic drainage of the lower limb is drained into the inguinal lymph nodes. It can occur directly or indirectly through the popliteal and the anterior tibial node. So in this diagram, this group is the deep inguinal lymph nodes group and here lies the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. So this group is of deep inguinal lymph nodes and here are the superficial so the group which lies lateral to the body are the lateral component and the group which lies medially are the medial component. These together form the upper horizontal group of the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. So the lymphatic drainage of lower limb occurs from the lymph nodes and the lymphatics. Now let's learn about the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are classified into two types, the superficial lymph nodes and the deep lymph nodes. Let's talk about the superficial lymph nodes now. In the lower limb, the main superficial lymph nodes are the superficial inguinal group of lymph nodes. That means this group. These are present in the superficial fascia in the inguinal region and they are arranged in two groups, the upper group and the lower group. The upper group lies horizontally and the lower group lies vertically which resembles the letter T. So in this diagram, this group is the upper group or the upper horizontal groups of superficial inguinal lymph nodes and these group of lymph nodes are the lower vertical group of superficial inguinal lymph nodes. So these are the lower group which are vertically arranged now let's talk about the upper group first. The upper group lies horizontally which lies below to the inguinal ligament. So in this diagram, this ligament is the inguinal ligament and the upper horizontal group of the superficial lymph nodes lie below to the inguinal ligament. The upper group consists of five lymph nodes in which the lateral group of lymph nodes consists of two to three nodes and they receive lymph from the gluteal region the upper part of the lateral side of the thigh, the flank region and the back of the abdominal wall below to the umbilicus. In the medial lymph nodes of the upper horizontal group, from the subcutaneous tissues of the anterior abdominal wall below to the umbilicus, they also drain lymph from the penis including the prepuce and the scrotum, the ovula and the vagina in the female. In the female, ovula and the vagina and it also drains few lymphatics from the suprolateral part of the uterus and the round ligament of the uterus. And coming to the second group of superficial inguinal lymph nodes, these are the lower group which lies vertically. These are placed along the both sides of the terminal part of the great saphenous vein. So this vein is the great saphenous vein that is the GSV. This lower vertical group of lymph nodes receive the lymph from the skin and the fascia from the most of the lower limb except from the buttock region. So they drain lymph from the skin and fascia of most of the lower limb. These nodes consist of four to five lymph nodes. Now let's talk about the deep groups of the lymph nodes. The deep lymph nodes of the lower limb are the deep inguinal lymph nodes and the popliteal lymph nodes. Let's talk about the deep inguinal lymph nodes. So in this diagram, these lymph nodes are called as the deep inguinal lymph nodes. These are 4 to 5 in number and this vein is the great saphenous vein. So this is the GSV. The deep inguinal lymph nodes lies medial side of the upper part of the femoral vein in the femoral triangle. This vein is the femoral vein and these lies medial side to the femoral vein in the femoral triangle. 
The most proximal node of this group lies in the femoral canal and this node is called as the gland of Clockett or the gland of Rosenmuller. So remember this point. This lymph node which lies more proximal lies in the femoral canal. For a diagram of the femoral canal you can click on the I button and this is called as the gland of Clockett or the gland of Rosenmuller. These deep lymph nodes receive the lymph from the superficial lymph nodes. That means these lymph nodes which lie superficially. These superficial lymph nodes drain the lymph into the deep group of lymph nodes. And also the popliteal nodes, the glans penis in the males and the clitoris in females. And the deep lymphatics from the lower limb which accompanies the femoral vein also drains into the deep group of inguinal lymph nodes. Now let's talk about the second group of the deep lymph nodes. These are the popliteal lymph nodes. So in this diagram, these are the group of the popliteal lymph nodes, which are 3 to 6 in number. As the name indicates, popliteal, they lie in the popliteal fossa. These are embedded in the popliteal pad of fat near to the termination of the small cephalous vein. The popliteal lymph nodes receives the lymph or the efferents from the territory of the small cephalous vein from the deep part of the leg that runs from the anterior and the posterior tibial vessels and also the knee joint. So remember as the popliteal lymph nodes lies deeper it collects lymph from the deeper structures like the knee joint, the deep part of the leg and the territory of the small cephalous vein. And in the deep lymph nodes of the leg, another group of lymph node is also present that is the anterior tibial lymph node. As the name indicates the anterior tibial that means it lies anterior to the tibia. So this is the anterior tibial lymph node. There is the third deep lymph node. It is an inconstant node which is found along the upper part of the anterior tibial artery. So it lies at the upper part of the anterior tibial artery that is sometimes present and it receives lymph from the anterior compartment of the leg and later these efferents passes into the popliteal lymph nodes. So these are the deep group of lymph nodes and these are the superficial group of lymph nodes. Now let's talk about the lymphatics of the lower limb. Like the lymph nodes, the lymphatics are also classified into two groups, the superficial and the deep. Let's learn about the superficial lymphatics first. The superficial lymphatics are larger and they are more numerous than the deep lymphatics. They run in the superficial fascia in the superficial lymphatics forms two streams. The first stream or the main stream, they follow the great cephalous vein and they further drain into the lower vertical group of the superficial lymph nodes. So these main stream of lymphatics follow the great cephalous vein that means here and they drain into the lower group of vertical superficial inguinal lymph nodes. And the second stream that is the accessory stream, they follow the small cephalous vein and they drain into the popliteal lymph nodes which are the deep group of the lymph nodes. So this is about the superficial lymphatics. Now let's talk about the deep group of lymphatics. The deep lymphatics are smaller and fewer in number and they drain all the structures lying deep to the deep fascia. These deep lymphatics run along the main blood vessels of the lower limb and they drain into the deep inguinal group of lymph nodes. And coming to the clinical correlation, the elephantiasis. The elephantiasis is caused when the lymphatic vessels of the lower limb are blocked particularly by the microfilarial parasites that is the Ocraria brancofti. This causes the massive edema of the lower limb which produces a clinical condition called as the elephantiasis. In this condition, the hypertrophy of the skin and the subcutaneous tissue is seen. 
and the second clinical correlation is the enlargement of the inguinal lymph nodes and it is the commonest cause of the swelling in the subinguinal region it may be caused due to the infections boils or the abscesses in the area and filariasis the hodgkin's disease may also cause the enlargement of the inguinal group of lymph nodes and these enlarged inguinal lymph nodes may be confused and they must be differentiated from the ectopic testis and the femoral hernia so guys this is all about the lymphatic drainage of the lower limb if you like this video do subscribe to my channel